So this has been like, what, three weeks? And it's somehow already Halloween. Four weeks. Wow, I can't believe it's already Halloween. I've been so busy with classes, I barely had any time to think about Halloween. Isabella told me about this party two weeks ago, but I haven't even thought about it until a couple days ago. Hey, Max, are you up ready yet? Come on, we gotta get there by eight! Hang on, I'm almost done getting changed. Luckily, my keyboardist, Jerry, does makeup as a hobby. He hooked me up with a pretty sweet costume, even if it is a little last minute. Is this gonna take me a few to get on, okay? Meanwhile, I'm gonna call Chad and let him know that I'm on my way. I'm out in five minutes, so don't be late, okay? Isabella leaves, dialing her cell phone. Ugh, I forgot about Chad. I'm sure he'll be dressed up as something stupid. If he's dressed up as a robot, my voice will be perfect. I gotta admit, I was looking forward to hanging out with Isabella and whatever hot-ass outfit she chose. Plus, whoever else shows up, but yeah, I certainly don't feel like spoiling my mood dealing with that giant slab of stupid Chad. Now I'm rethinking if I even want to go. I guess there will be plenty of eye candy if I do go. Chad can't stop me from looking. I don't know, whatever. Play it. Hell, Chad can't stop me. I'm gonna strut my stuff for all the fine ladies. Quick change later and I head out to the porch with Isabella. Okay, that's... That's a slapdash quick costume? It's fucking fuck. Well, whale? Hot. <clears throat> hey, nice! I always knew you were a little brain dead. I didn't think the rest of you was dead too. Oh, bite me, please. Preferably up in my room for the next couple hours. You're looking damn fine, babe. Oh, you don't have to tell me hot stuff. Now, if it only the others would show up, we could get going. Is it cold? I am here. Oh, you dog, you! No, woof, Isabel. I am a woof. It's saying, Rakesh. It's a saying, Rakesh. You look good, Rakesh. How long did that take? Not long, though. Uh, the glue I rolled in itches. I am not sure what kind of fur this is, is it? That's... Terrible, Rakesh. But for now, you look great, so who cares? Who else is coming? Hmm, I think you'll like this spell. Isabella leans in close to me. Oh, I like it already. Say it with me. Bibbity bobbity. Ha <laughs> ha! Um, who? That's, that's a bit of a revealing outfit for a shy girl, but... <laughs> It's fine. Now I know I like this spell. You're never gonna get scared like that, hon. Come on, you gotta sell it. Definitely, because whatever you're selling, I'm buying. Between the two of you, I'm gonna run out of cash. I'll be happy to bleed you dry later, hot stuff. Your costume looks good too, Max. Thanks. Is this it? Any other surprises for me? This is it! Dominic's hanging back to hand out candy if anybody comes by, and Sally's gonna head hand out pamphlets on where to compost your pumpkins. Girl knows how to party! Then let's get going. These two fine ladies in tow, I'm definitely looking forward to this. Together we make our way down to the party site, another house on campus. Ten minutes later, well, just in time, we're staring at an incredibly well-decorated house. Yep. Yep, that's decorated. Whoever did the decorating really went all out. This whole place is covered in cobwebs. I can't even see some of the cutouts that look like ghosts in the windows. Welcome to you, our most esteemed guests of honor. I presume you are the inspectors we sent for? Huh? You may call me butler. We rang the, cons the constables to solve the ghastly murder in our quaint dormitory. I, 
I thought you were they. No? Well, please come in. I look at the other roomies, who all appear to be just as confused as I am. <clears throat> I don't know why he's talking that way, but he enters through the front door and gestures for us to enter as well. I hear it was a theme party! I didn't know it was going to be like this! Hi, as long as I'm with you ladies, I'll play along with whatever weird stuff they want to throw all away. This way, please. Do mind the corpse. Mind the... Before Rukesh can finish, we've all entered and are staring at the bloody corpse in the middle of the hall. That's totally there right now, yes. <coughs> There are about ten other people here with us. Some of the others are talking amongst themselves about the body. It's actually really well done and looks believable. My poor Mr. Body. He owns this building. Well, owned. He donated a rather large sum to the college. Apparently on behalf of a student he had a particular fondness for. Actually, it's rather odd. But he had been filling out these cards when he sent me out. They... they have your names on them. Butler hands everyone in the room a card with their names on it. So, is that why we had to harvest VP for this thing? I open my card and inside it says that you were Mr. Body's number one salesperson. You are an innocent, but the murderer is out there. At seven... at seven o'clock you were refueling your vehicle. Hi, what did you guys get? Please, do not discuss the contacts, contents of your letter until the constables arrive. We wouldn't want anyone to tamper with the evidence. While we wait, please avail yourselves of the amenities. There is a kitchen down the hall. The study is that way, and the sitting room is through the door. I expect there may be clues about. I'm sure you'll discover something along the way. So, what's going on? Looks like you're on the case, Hot Stuff! Time to figure out who murdered this poor sap! The game is afoot, as it were. It's elementary, my dear Rakesh. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. Well, I know what I like to investigate. <laughs> Down, dead boy! It appears we must solve this dreadful crime. Who doesn't love a good mystery? You are way too into this, hun! Us might actually be pretty cool. Huh, I think I gotta go see what I can find in the study. But is there food in the kitchen? Indubitably. I shall take that as a yes and go feed myself. I think I can see... I think I'll see what I can deduce from the sitting room. Oh, I think I'll f come and find you guys in a sec. Don't keep me waiting, hot stuff! You know it, boib. While we were making our plans, so everyone that while we were making our plans, so was everyone else. Soon enough of the crowd disappears, only the butler is left. So, dude, what's really up? Exactly what I've said so far. Alright, I'll play along. So what are the facts, Jack? I'm afraid I don't know much. Feel free to look over the body for clues. I'll answer your questions as you like. Alright, I can work with this. I think I may be surprising everyone tonight. The only real question is now where to start. Hmm, clearly there are four rooms to visit. If I include the main hall here, there are probably clues in each of them. Not to mention my friends. Well, I guess I'll just have to figure out which ones come first. Oh, jeez. I have entered into a mini game within the game. Well, since I'm already in the hall, I might as well investigate here. 
Time to investigate the main hall. After all, there is a body here to look into. I look around the room to just to get my bearings. There are some stairs that go up, and it seems to be out of bounds for the game. The main entrance is here, too. The butler appears to have gone back outside to wait for the police. The body lies before me. Whoever did it up was a great job, and it almost looks like a real person. A real person who has had the back of their skull caved in. The body is wearing a very nice three-piece suit that's been treated very roughly. Whoever got to him must have had a fight on their hands. There were holes and tears all over. The man was also clearly quite well-to-do. A gold watch peeks out from under one of his sleeves. I'm a little hesitant to mess with the body. I don't know if it's against the rules or what not. Oi! Butler, can I touch this guy? If you think it will help your case, sir. Everyone else seems to have gone search for clues elsewhere. I'm sure the police will be able to put the pieces together if nobody else here can. Sounds good. I take a look at the watch on his wrist. It's definitely seen better times. The strap is nearly broken off and the face is definitely broken. A little blood has gotten onto it and on the strap and the knob on the side. The watch hands have stopped moving, stuck pointing at 7 o'clock. I decide to go through the pockets of the jacket as well. After a few moments of rifling around, my hands grasp something. It appears to be a stop payment order on a check. The only reason on the reason line, it just says cut off. There doesn't appear to be anything else of note on the body. Well, Butler, I think it's time you told me what you know. Exactly what happened here. Very well. Here is the sordid tale. I was here when the master returned from work at six in the evening. He was certainly planning on throwing a costume party tonight. All of the invitations to you were sent off ages ago. At 6.55, the master noticed that we dreadfully short of port for the evening. He immediately sent me to acquire more for the night. Obviously, I don't really know what happened while I was gone. I arrived back from the shops at 7.30. I, I entered to find the horrendous scene before you. I called the police, of course, but then you all began arriving, and, well, you know where we got from here. Did you hear any strange noises when you were leaving? Any sign of a struggle? If we are to assume his watch broke at the time of the assault, it wasn't long after you left. No, but I don't recall hearing anything unusual as I left. It was actually very quiet. And there was nobody here when you got back? No. I checked all the rooms and nobody was about. Are there any other entrances or exits? There is a back entrance, but it was still locked when I checked it. Alright, well, thank you, butler. Of course, sir. <coughs> I think that's all I'm going to get out of this place for now. Well, that was certainly a good place to start. Question is, where next? Time to visit the study. I think Isabella came in here. One of the classrooms has been converted for the evening. Looks like there are people relaxing all over. Someone even th put a few pipes in a coffee uh, on a coffee table between some of the chairs. They probably haven't been used since I'm pretty sure this is a no smoking building. Isabella is sitting in one of the chairs, idly leafing through a book. I don't know if she's reading it or not. Actually, hi, Isabella. Hey, Hot Stuff. Glad you came to find me. I was afraid I was going to be all alone in here. She's really laying it on pretty thick tonight. Not that I mind. So, where's Chad anyway? I suppose it's too much to hope that he's a corpse out. He's the corpse out there. Ha! No such luck. Nah, Chad left much earlier. Said he had to go bail one of his friends out. Oi, that just means more for me. So what did your card say? Ha <laughs> ha, that would be telling. And where's the fun in that? Aren't you trying to worm any information out of me? Well, there are plenty of things I'd like to get out of, get you out of. Oh, tempting. Isabella stands up from her chair and walks over to me, dra draping her arms over my shoulders. So, Mr. Interrogator, you think you can wring a confession from these lips? Well, this could involve some very in-depth questioning. I wouldn't want you to get 
tongue-tied. Don't worry, I am very hot under pressure. You're hot everywhere, anywhere, babe. Come on, did you do the crime? Isabella grins wickedly at me, then leans in close to my ear. If I was guilty, detective, would it matter? <clears throat> Pursing her lips, she blows a little air over my ear. Well, I can certainly offer you a hell of a deal if you cooperate with me. Ooh, what's the fun in cooperation? The struggle is so much more interesting. I'll play it any way you want, babe. I can be mean, or I can be very, very nice. Well, since you asked so nice. So, what's your story here, Isabella? Well, you know, Mr. Body was my boss. We worked together for God's sake. I've been his secretary for three years now. Hmm. Do you have any problems with your boss? Of course not. We got along famously. Everyone knows he was always hanging with my every word. As my voice crackles. <laughs> and was there anything else going on between you two? Hmm. I'm sorry. What? What? Uh... What do you mean? Oh, please, babe. If you were more secretary, I would be in HR every day for being inappropriate. Are you saying I can't be professional, Max? That's almost exactly what I'm saying. I'm also saying that men are more than happy to be unprofessional right along with you. I know I am. I close the distance between us, looking down at her with my best gotcha stare. Well, fine. Yeah, we messed around a bit. It was nothing serious. Just a little harmless fun. Ha, I knew it. And did his wife know about this harmless fun? Well, if it's harmless, she wouldn't really need to know about it, would she? I figured. So where were you around seven? Ugh, don't remind me. That was before we got here, right? You asked why Chad didn't come? Well, just ask the patrons in my cafe, and they'll tell you why he didn't come. We had a huge fight, and then he told me he had to go bail someone out of jail. He left at seven, and I went home to prepare to come here with you. They're not talking about the game anymore. How far away is the cafe from here? I don't know, about 15 minutes. Okay, one more question. Take a look at this for me. I hand the slip of paper to Isabella. Watching her reaction carefully, she unfurls the paper, looking it over. For a fraction of a second, her face tightens in anger. Then she's all smiles again. Clearly, he didn't want someone to get paid. That looks like his personal account, so I don't know what it could have been for. Did you know his account numbers well as his secretary? As his secretary, I ran a few checks for him now and then. I have a good head for numbers, what can I say? Well, thank you very much for your time, Isabella. No problem, detective. I hope you figure out who did this and bring them to justice. Isabella winks at me and goes back to idly leafing through her book in her comfy chair. Well, there was clearly an affair happening between her and Body, but it's not necessarily evidence that she did it. I have to investigate further. As I return to the main hall, I pass by a couple of other guests in the murder mystery. I hear a quick snippet of their conversation. I hear Mr. Brody was about to break things off with his mistress. Hmm, no mistress takes kindly to that sort of thing. Especially if they're not doing the breaking up. Well, anyway, that's another do room down. Only question is now where to go. All right. I think next we shall go to the sitting room. <clears throat> looks a lot just like our common room, but with a nicer TV, and even looks like someone brought in a small bar. Upon closer inspection, it looks like it's got all kinds of juices, but no alcohol. Which means I immediately find it uninteresting. Anne is here on one of the small couches in the corner, writing in a small notebook. A few other people are... Sitting in various other parts of the room, 
but they all seem to be nattering about nothing. Come to think of it, I haven't really seen all those other people much. Most of them must be come here just must have come here to discuss things. Looks like a bunch of them have juice glasses. Hello, Anne. Hoiding out in here, huh? Well, maybe a little. I have my reasons. Well, speaking of reasons, maybe we should ask we maybe we should talk to you about your story, yeah. Come on, let's hit talk about you for a while, eh? Okay, Mr. Sleuth, what would you like to know? Well, how did you know, Mr. Body? I only just met him a few months ago, actually. I didn't really know him very well. He hired me to write his memoirs, you see. Hmm. Do you think it could have an interesting enough life for a book? I mean, was his company that successful? I've heard a few Fortune 500 types putting out their stories. Was it like that? Yes, exactly like that. Apparently he heard a few of my books before and he wanted me to ghostwrite his story. Have you read any of my books? I wrote the Starlight Sally series that everyone was reading a few years back. I also write a, wrote A Spy's Game as Murder, which you might know. Do the... Do those books even exist, Anne? I didn't know you'd written anything. Max, I'm in character here. Get into the spirit of it, would you? I swear I'll put a hex on you. Okay, okay, calm down. So you wrote some really well-known books, then? Yes, a lot of fantasy and fiction, mostly. I told my publisher I was, in, I was interested in writing some non-fiction. When he mentioned that Mr. Body was a big fan, I thought it would be my chance. And how... And how was the book coming along? Oh, it was fine. He was an interesting subject, certainly. Anne can't meet my eyes as she says this. She stops just short of making a disgusted face. Uh, it didn't exactly make for a page turner, huh? Oh, no, no. I can't make any story, I can make any story interesting. That's what I do. Did you know that Starlight Sally and Bugman of Xanadu was really a story about an ant farm? Number one in the New York bestseller list for seven weeks, and it could have just as easily been written by a third grade student science report. That's how good I am. Oh, huh? and did you have to do a lot of doctoring on Mr. Body's story? Well, how could I? It was non-fiction. Anne has gone back to writing in her little notebook. Just notes on the case. If you don't hurry, I might figure out who the culprit is before you. So you, where were you at seven? You could ask the bartender at the Dog and Biscuit. He'd probably be the only one who could tell you how many I had, since he's the one that cut me off. Why? What? Seriously? Max! Oh, right, character, sorry. <laughs> Look, I don't have a drinking problem. I drink, I get drunk, I write books. No problem. Ha! That's a good one. Okay, one last question. Take a look at this for me, would ya? I hand her the slip of paper. Anne unfurls it, looking at it with confusion. Looks like the stop payment. So, wait, is this check to me? I'll murder that bastard. Um, Anne blushes fiercely. Well, you know, I would have, but only figuratively, I would never actually, oh my. Does it look like an amount for you? Well, no. Maybe if you finally came through on that bonus, I'd generally make less. Whoever was making this must have set up, must have been set up pretty nicely. Hell, should have negotiated for this much. Well, thank you for your time, man, and I'll let you get back to writing your case notes. So let me know if you come up with anything. We'll see. Good luck, detective. I'll be interested to see if you get this one right, Max. Anne looks at me appraisingly. She's really into this stuff. I think she's enjoying the intellectual, intellectual, ugh, intellectual, intellectual, whatever, challenge. <clears throat> I give her a little bow and head back out. 
As I return to the main hall and pass by a couple of other guests in the murder mystery, I hear a quick snippet of their conversation. I hear Mr. Bonnie was about to break things off with his mistress. Hmm. No mistress takes kindly to that blah blah blah. Well, anyway, there's another room down. Only question is where to go next. So is it Isabella? Because I kind of guess it's Isabella. We'll go to the kitchen anyway. I think it's time to visit the kitchen. Kitchen. Maybe I can catch up with Rakesh. I wander down the hall to see what it looks like. What it looks like in a little break room. There's a refrigerator. Blah 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 blah. I see Rakesh applying peanut butter to some bread slices at the counter next to the refrigerator. Digging around inside the fridge, I see a girl I don't know. Let me know when you find the jelly, Roxanne. Hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm looking. I don't know if they have any. How did you talk me into this anyway? Because I make an excellent sandwich. Hi, Rakesh. Ah, Max, welcome. We will get more bread. What is a kitchen without snacks, hmm? It was your new friend. This is Roxanne. Apparently she was staying here in the building to... She was staying here in the building to sort out some of her affairs. Affairs? Or an old school... In an old school house? That unfortunate murder case in the Great Hall is my father. He called me here under some pretense of having to, something to tell me. It was apparently going to be something about his new lover. Honestly, if he weren't paying my way through college, I wouldn't have listened to anything that old bag had to say. Daddy boy and trying to boy your love. What's the matter? Didn't get enough hugs. Oh, please. He was an awful man, a gambler and a drunk. He probably just fell down those stairs. I hated that man. I hated him to the bones. I won't deny it. I've got nothing to hide. Roxanne slams a jar of jelly on the counter next to Rakesh and storms out of the room. Rakesh finishes making the sandwiches and hands one to me. So what's your deal in this crazy place, Rakesh? Whoops. Ah, yes, well, as to my story, story, as I keep dying, I am not sure if you ever saw me around the office. I was Mr. Body's bodyguard. He did not feel I was necessary when he was at his own office. Still, I saw you a time or two. He was your boss as well. Did you A.T. get along all right? Oh, yes, he was a very strict boss. You didn't like him? No, that is uh, not true at all. Well, maybe it's a little true. I was not fond of him, but he does not need to be fond of one's employers to remain employed. Is that correct? Well, I suppose that's true, but surely you could have found somewhere else to work. Mr. Buddy was uh, very persuasive. You don't sound like a loyal employee. There is the thought. At any rate, I did not have anything to do with the terrible crime outside the note. That is for certain. Hmm, so where were you around 7 o'clock tonight? What time was that? An hour before we got here? I was finishing up with an art class. I was doing a bit of life modeling. Oh, I didn't know you did that. Well, art is a bit of a side passion of mine. We both chuckle at that. Mr. Body said that she wouldn't need me. He wouldn't need me tonight, so I took the opportunity. Just one thing, Rakesh. Can you take a look at this for me? I handed him the slip of paper, watching his reaction. He uncurls the paper, looking it over. Looks worried for a moment. Hmm. This is one of his personal accounts, not the one he pays me out of. I think. I hope it's not yours, is it? No, not mine. Probably someone cl else close to him. It's definitely a personal account. Okay. Well, thank you, Rakesh. Make sure you find me if you think of anything else. Most definitely. Thank you, Max. 
Hmm, I think there was definitely more to Rakesh's relationship with Mr. Buddy than he's saying, but I'll have to figure it out as I go. So I return to the main hall and pass by a couple of blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't get to my coffee at the cafe. It's six. I always go out at ten to seven. They had shut down. Some kind of fight. Seems fairly early for some reason. Wonder what else might be inaccurate. Well, anyway, that's another room down. Only question is now where I'll go next. I think I've done everywhere. Just gonna make my guess. Butler, gather the people. I think it's time we close this case. Very well, sir. The little guy runs off to grab everyone while I collect my thoughts. Once everyone's gathered around, I stand next to the body while I eye everyone. Someone in the... <clears throat> Someone in here thinks they're pretty clever. Someone thinks they've pulled the wool over my eyes. Someone didn't count on exactly how smart I am. Oh, I've seen the evidence. Oh, I talked to some of you in very... Some of you very in depth. Isabella winks at me. The others look around at each other, sizing up what I'm going to say. And now, it's time to bring this little game to a close. With me as its winner. It's all quite clear to me now. It's definitely Isabella. Because it makes the most sense for... But if it makes the most sense for Isabella, would it not in turn be Isabella? <sighs> Accuser. <clears throat> I take in a deep breath as I pass my gaze across everyone in the room once more. It's a tale as old as time, really. Successful boss gets himself a pretty secretary. Figures he can string her along and have his fun. And once he's had his fun, he can toss her to the curb like many others. Isabella's face is darkening as she looks at me, but I can't stop now. Of course, no woman appreciates being tossed to the curb. Which is why when she came to what she thought was a party, and discovered that was in fact her sugar daddy cutting her off, she snapped. Isn't that right, Isabella? Isabella turns her anger into a seductive glance. You've had your fun! Now tell us who really did it! Surely you don't think that I actually did it! Sorry, babe. You're not getting off it that easy. I've got to give you a little more help. You didn't get here at seven. The butler would have had the fort leading up to the murder. Oh, I have no doubt that your alibi checks out until almost seven. Well, you checked out a little early, didn't you? <clears throat> you got here while the butler was away. You and Body had a little talk about your arrangement, but he got you off. You got... <laughs> I'm cockney for this thing. Just go with it. He fought and grabbed the first thing at hand, smashed his head in, then you smashed his watch when you were done. And by the blood and the adjustment knob on the watch, I can tell it was you who set the time back to seven so your alibi would check out. You probably staged the fight with Chad to cement your alibi. The final piece of the puzzle, the stop, pl the stop payment request. It was for you, wasn't it? Fine, you got me! He was supposed to set me up for life! It was worth a little fling! Or it would have been worth it if he'd come through on his end of the bargain! But apparently, he decided that he didn't want me getting my own side. Getting my own on the side, that hypocrite. Whatever, I'm sorry you had to die. I didn't intend for this to happen. But no one crosses me, you hear? No one! Well done, Max. You have solved the mystery. Okay, well, whatever. I'm not going after Isabella Day anyway. <clears throat> and, unfortunately, that is all the time we have. I want to thank you all for coming out for Alpha, Theta, Rho, 
Fraternity's Murder Mystery Evening. If you would like, please feel free to join us for a party proper at our house. Everyone claps loudly for the butler who takes a bow. People start heading out the door. The Latin house roomies gather in the lot. I can't believe how much fun that was. Did you see me in there? Definitely. You clearly need to channel some of all, some of that all the time, man. Oh yeah, you were definitely working it. She wasn't the only one. Well, hey, if you got it, flaunt it. Though I can't believe they made me the other woman for some skeezy old businessman. Well, if the shoe fits. Watch it, jackass! Everyone laughed as Isabella starts chasing me around, threatening to bite me. That was a lot of fun, to pretend to be someone else for the evening. I suppose that was what Halloween is all about, yes? I suppose that's very true, Crash. Nice work. Well, now that I'm done pretending to be a sexy office worker, I think it's time to pretend to be a drunken vampire who wants to get some research material. Hear, hear. Are you really just going to pretend to be drunk? Everyone just stares at Rakesh for a moment before we all head off laughing to a frat house. A bit. Holy balls! That was a long, long section. And now we reach week five. That'll be the end to whatever episode this is. The, the entire episode probably will be the Halloween one. Whatever. But see you next time as we continue this bullshit as we go after Sally, not Isabella, because we already fucked that up, so it doesn't matter.